Vascular anastomoses require very careful and gentle handling of the vessels. They utilize fine, non-absorbable monofilament sutures and a careful knotting technique. Multiple throws are needed for each knot. A smooth internal suture line is essential. The hemostats should have rubber shods on each end in order to prevent damage to the proline suture material that will be used in the anastomosis. The integrity of monofilament sutures depends on the outer layer for strength, and this can be damaged by grasping with clips or needle holders. The rubber shods on the clips prevents this damage occurring. A vein patch is the safest way to close an arteriotomy if there is the slightest risk that direct closure will produce narrowing. Start by lifting the adventitia of the artery and then with the blade pointing away from you use a short stabbing motion with the scalpel. Make an elliptical arteriotomy about 3 cm long. Inspect the internal surface of the vessel with care. Excise the lips so that if primary closure were to be undertaken, it would produce obvious stenosis. A defect such as this one should never be closed using a primary suture technique. Using the simulated vein provided, cut one end in the form of an ellipse, but leave the other end of the patch long and unshaped at this stage. This section of the patch can thus be grasped without risk of damage to that portion of the intima that will be in subsequent contact with the blood flow. Using a 5O proline suture, insert an initial transverse mattress suture at the shaped apex of the patch, from outside to inside on the patch, and from inside to outside at the apex of the arteriotomy. The second needle completes the second half of this first mattress suture. Using a transverse mattress suture is useful as it starts the E version of the suture line. Tie the suture using two throws of a formal reef knot. Place one in a rubber shod hemostat. Then using the other needle, work down the far side of the arteriotomy, from outside to inside on the graft, and inside to outside on the artery. The role of the assistant is crucial. He must maintain the tension in the suture that has been set by the surgeon. If he does not, the result will be leakage. Try to ensure that the vein patch is bedded down by holding the surface portion of the patch with your forceps, thus everting the suture line. Continue to work down the far side of the incision. Only going through graft and artery with one sweep when it is very apparent that it is safe to do so. In normal circumstances, it is inadvisable to suture both vein patch and arterial wall with a single traverse of the needle unless you are experienced and can be certain that you include all layers of the vessel wall.
once you reach the far end, further cutting to length and shaping of the graft can be undertaken. Continue to suture around the apex, taking care how you handle the vein patch now that the excess has been removed. Continue for a few more sutures so that your final knot will not lie at the apex of the patch. Place the suture in a rubber shod hemostat. Now take the other end of the suture and start to suture down the proximal wall again from outside to inside on the patch and inside to outside on the arterial wall. Take care not to handle the suture material or the arterial wall with your forceps. Continue to join the other end of the suture and then tie the sutures together. Do this with the reef knot using six or more throws, laying each one correctly with care and then cut the suture. When you've finished, open the aorta behind the patch and inspect the internal surface. Look to see if there are gaps in the suture line, that the suture is tight enough and that the suture line is smooth with each suture having included all layers of the arterial wall. 